Hello, everybody on King Television. This is Eric Smith, and I'm so excited for today's Next Generation broadcast. You know why? Because we have three ministers that I know have been praying. They've been seeking the Lord. They've been going after God on your behalf because we believe today is going to be a, day, a great day of miracles, a great day of transformation, a great day of breakthroughs for you that are watching today. Uh, we don't believe this word goes out just by happenstance. We don't believe that you're watching us right now just because uh, we were flipping through channels and caught us. No, we believe you. This is, a, uh, this is a divine appointment, and we believe you're going to be impacted. We believe your life will never be the same because of, of these three messages you're going to hear today from these three powerful ministers. So here's what I like you to do. I always like to encourage as we, as we open the broadcast, I want you to think about someone else beside yourself for just for a moment here. The Bible says we're supposed to prefer our brother and sister above ourselves. So I want you to think about somebody right now that might be struggling physically. Maybe someone battling some kind of physical illness. Maybe it's some kind of chronic pain in their body. Could be arthritis, could be a, a fibromyalgia, could be something like a, maybe someone's got brain tumors, maybe they have, uh, maybe they just had back surgery, maybe they're in a car accident. You know, the devil does all he can to steal, kill, and destroy. But the second half of that verse of John 10, 10 says it this way, but Jesus has come to give us life and life abundantly. So what I want to encourage you to do right now is I want you to think about someone that might be sick in body, maybe someone struggling, maybe with an addiction, maybe battling, uh, maybe some kind of a, a, a just a just a just oppression or depression, maybe to some extent. Or maybe someone you know just needs a message of hope. The Bible says that the gospel is good news. And let's we're gonna hear some good news here for the over the next hour. And you can be a conduit that God can use. I'm not asking you to preach a message. These three ministries have that covered, but I am asking you to be a vessel God can use. I want you to reach out four or five, six people right now. Tell them the way you're watching King Television. You're watching this, this amazing network through cable TV, through satellite television, Roku, Apple TV. There's about 20 ways you can watch King TV, but tell them the way you're watching. And I believe today, again, as they hear these messages, I believe the, their ears are going to be open to hear, their hearts going to be ready to receive, and we're going to see God do amazing things. And guess what? You'll be a part of it. So thank you for doing it. Our first speaker today is a wonderful man of God. This is Kim Noah. Norris. He's the president and CEO of Kim Norris Ministries based out of Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, through his ministry last year, over a million people came to Christ. I know he's excited about what God's doing with him this year. Brother Kim, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, sir, please share with the worldwide audience what God's doing through ministry, if you would. So glad to be with everyone today. We've got a great team here. Evangelist Sharon Motley, Dr. Brian Adams. We're, we've come together in the spirit. We've ministered together uh, in the continent of Africa. And now we're ministering to you by way of King TV. I want you to prepare yourself for receiving the divine touch of Christ today. Uh, uh, I am uh, the overseer of City Church for All Nations. My son, David, and his beautiful wife, Summer, are the pastors. They're doing a fantastic job. We're seeing people come to the Lord every week. And I want to say this briefly, that behind me is a little picture that we got from the Sea of Galilee area, Magdala, I hope you can see it. There's a woman with a finger and a, a white sleeve reaching for the garment of Christ. In a few moments, I'm going to be preaching to you about the woman with the issue of blood that was healed by the supernatural power of God. That same healing is for you today. We're looking forward to ministering to you. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks so much for being a part of the broadcast today, Pastor Kim. Looking forward to your message, guys, giving you today for King TV. Appreciate you, sir. Our second speaker is another powerful woman of God. This is Pastor Sharon Motley. Uh, she's now the president CEO of Sharon Motley Ministries. She's based out of Sarasota, Florida, travels all across America and around the world. Her and her husband do an amazing job. Pastor Sharon, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, please share with the Worldwide Audience what guys do with your ministry as well. Thank you, Brother Eric, and to Pastors John and Rachel Javad. God bless you. Uh, it's such an honor and privilege always to be here to share the word of the Lord. And I know that as Pastor Kim shares the word and that as I come and then Dr. Brian comes behind us, you are going to get a faith filled hour. Call somebody and tell them uh, God is doing great things. Uh, my husband and I just moved to Sarasota, Florida. God has called us out into more of an apostolic uh, ministry to oversee churches. We're going to start a church here, um, put someone in charge of that, and go to another city. So uh, we appreciate all your prayers as God navigates us during this season of our life. Uh, but we always love every opportunity to share the gospel. So thank you today, Brother Eric. 
Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Sharon. Appreciate you so very much. And I'm looking forward to hearing the message guys giving you as well today for King TV. Our third and final speaker is Dr. Brian Adams. This is uh, He's a president CEO of Brian Adams Ministries based out of Jackson, Ohio. He himself travels all across America, around the world, and uh, has, has strong miracles following his ministry. Dr. Brian, thanks so much for joining us today on King TV. If you would, please share the world audience with God's with your ministry as well. Well, it's uh, always wonderful to see you, Eric. Uh, I wish I had the energy you have and could keep up with you. So that's where my faith is at. But... Uh, it's just an honor to be used by God. I never thought I would have been, but that's just every day I wake up, I, I meditate on the amazing grace of God. And I believe that's what we're going to offer to people today. He's given me opportunity to travel to many countries, but also he, he reminds me, don't forget America is a nation and America truly needs ministered and truly needs the grace of God. And I just want to remind people real quickly then when it looks like everything's uh, going to hell in a handbasket, as some people might make the phrase, and it looks terrible, I just want to remind you, where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. So I believe we as ministers, we can tap into that grace and to help say, this is what's going to fix the problem, is what Christ has provided for us. So thank you for allowing me to be on here today, Eric. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being a part of it, Dr. Brian. Appreciate you, sir. And I, I'm telling you, King Television, you're in for a treat right now. These three ministers have been on the crusade fields with myself as we travel around the world. We have seen tens of thousands of decisions for Christ. We have seen so many notable miracles, deaf, deaf ears, blind eyes, cripples walking, tumors disappearing off people's bodies. Yes. And in a recent crusade we did in Togo, we had a person come to the platform. And I think all three will remember this. A person's, I think it was, it was a mother-in-law that died in the in the service prior to him getting there and then he came to apply he came to that service believing god for a miracle for his mother-in-law and three hours after she passed he came to the platform and testified his mother-in-law came back to life so listen there is nothing too difficult for god i want to encourage you to get your your just your faith ready to receive if you if you've been You've been dealing with maybe an incurable disease. Maybe you got something the doctor said, I can't do anymore to help you. Guess what? Jesus can heal anyone at any time. And I want to encourage you, as you get ready to hear these messages, I believe you're going to get a notable miracle. So just get ready to receive it. And when you feel that pain's gone, there's going to be a number at the bottom of the screen. I want you to call it and tell King TV, here's what God's done for me. Now, listen, before Pastor Kim begins to minister, I want to remind you one more time, take about 30 seconds, please. If you haven't reached out to someone that needs to know Jesus Christ as their Savior that needs a miracle from the Lord, needs to be delivered and set free from something, needs a message of hope, please take about 30 seconds, send a quick text message, a message through social media, grab the link the way you're watching King Television, send it to them and tell them, listen, give me 55 minutes of your time and watch what God will do for you today. And I know God's going to show up strong. Thank you so much for doing it. I got our first speaker coming out of the gate. This is Pastor Kim Norris coming to us all the way from the great city and state of Bloomington, Indiana. Pastor Kim, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, sir, please bring forth the message God's given today for King TV. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Eric. I want to speak to you today on the simple thought, set the time. And we see the miracle of the woman with the issue of blood that was healed supernaturally by setting the time to touch the garment of Christ. Now, Jesus, in his physical body, uh, is ascended to heaven, interceding for us now at the right hand of God. However, he has sent the beautiful Holy Spirit, who has come now to take the place of Christ. So when we get ready to pray, I want you to begin to follow the process of this woman, to have a thought, have a word, and have an act of faith, as we're going to pray for you, to touch him today and set the time. Yesterday, we had a, a meeting with our team that's getting ready to go to the Philippines. And the young man, I noticed a man, his name is Ken Strick, Strickland, that was uh, delivered in his life uh, from alcohol. But he said, Pastor Ken, there's a piece of meat that is stuck uh, and it's not going down my esophagus right into my stomach. And it's strange, it's awkward, and I'm a little concerned about it. And we spoke the word to that. And prayed in Jesus' name, and we gave that command in the next 24 hours. And uh, But praise God, we heard that back from him in 20 minutes after we had to leave, that that meat, that piece of meat that was lodged was released into the stomach. So it was an example of setting the time. What happened in this story from Mark chapter 5, 
25 to 34. This woman, the Bible says, suffered 12 years and had suffered of many physicians. In other words, she had no money. She had no natural strength. And the scripture said she had an issue of blood, which scholars believe she had continual bleeding. Uh, that caused her, due to the religious protocols of Judaism, to not worship in the temple, not associate in public. She was married and had children. This definitely affected her as a wife, as a mother, possibly a grandmother. Her life was being defined and ruined by this disease, whom the Bible calls the issue of blood. But notice, the scripture said, when she heard of Jesus. So she heard that Jesus healed and performed miracles. And I'm here to declare to you that as the book of Hebrews says, 13.8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what he did in the gospels, in Bible times, he does today. And what he does today, he'll do forever. His power is unchanged. His nature is unchanged. His name is unchanged. And he gives you the promise that he said, if you call on my name, I will save you. I will heal you. I will deliver you because I am the unchanging Christ of Calvary. He went to the cross for us. Everyone, I want you to know, he took your place. He took my place. He took everyone's place because we were born in sin. And the blessed son of God that came from heaven died for us on Calvary and was a substitute and took the punishment of our sins that we could be reconciled to God. And in that sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, Isaiah said, with his stripes, we are healed. And furthermore, he said, he bore our sicknesses and he carried our pains. So Jesus was the perfect substitute that God sent to us, the blessed son of God, also provided healing. Now, how did this woman receive her healing and how are you gonna to receive today? The Bible says that she had a thought. She said to herself, if I can get through the crowd and touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. What's your thought today? What's your plan? Are you just saying, well, I hope God blesses me? Well, he will, but he said, ask of me. He said, seek and you'll find. Knock and it shall be open. She had a thought that, of how she was going to be healed. And somebody said, well, your team is on on." on the internet today, can I be healed? Absolutely. Because the power of the risen Christ who was raised from the dead on the third day has the power to touch and heal you just like he healed this woman. And notice how she received, and this is how you can receive. She had a thought, a plan. So get ready. In about mm, eight minutes or so, we're going to start praying for you and praying for the healing. I'm gonna call on my associate evangelist today too. We're gonna to work together in my little time slot and still have time for our dear evangelist Sharon to preach. Then she spoke something. She said, if I can touch that clothing, if I can touch that cloth, touch that hem, if I could just make contact and have a point of contact with Jesus, I'm gonna receive. And I'm going to receive, and this terrible bleeding, what was it, 4,280 days of bleeding, can you imagine that, is going to stop. It's going to stop today. It's going to stop now. And she had the plan. She had the words. What's your word today? Can you dare speak out of your mouth? God's going to heal me today. God's going to make me whole today. God's going to bring household salvation to my family today. God's going to save me today from my sins. And he's going to do it in the next few minutes because the team is going to pray through King TV. Well, the Bible says when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, the scripture says Jesus knew virtue. That's a Greek word that means power. 
It's the ability, the inherent ability and strength of God, the miracle power. He knew it left him. But in his humanity, he didn't know who touched him. And he said, somebody did it. So who, who was it? Somebody, well, you said, you're surrounded, Jesus. You're talking, what do you mean? People are jostling you in the crowd. No, somebody touched me. I tell you, the Lord will know and you will know when he touches you and you touch him and you're going to touch him today. And the woman uh, in somewhat of a frantic place, state of mind, fell down at the feet of Jesus and said, Lord, it was me. I know I shouldn't be here in public. I know I'm breaking religious customs, but I had to get my healing. I had to touch you, Jesus. I had to get through this suffering and receive a miracle. The Lord did not rebuke her for breaking those traditions, but rather he was pleased. You know, you can please God with your faith because the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So that means we can please God with our faith. And he said these beautiful words, daughter, your faith hath made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. Now, here are the things that God told me to pray about today. One is for kidneys, healing of kidneys, uh, gallbladders, prostate healing of cancer in the prostate, lungs. I saw a growth in a left lung today that God's going to remove and working now. And we're also coming against pneumonia effects of COVID. Also, we're going to ask for the cleansing of, of the liver organ, the appendix, and the spleen. Now, say, Pastor Kim, I need healing, but you didn't mention my condition. Get ready to use your faith and touch Jesus, because that power of God will go to the area that it's needed. I prayed for a man one time with a heart condition, and when I prayed for him, he responded, but I saw the Holy Spirit go to his heart. It didn't go necessarily to his knees and ankles. It went to the area that his heart needed, and God revived his heart, gave him strength. He lived on another 15 years. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I curse the spirit of infirmity. I command this sickness, this pain, this disease to come out of your right kidney, come out of your left kidney, and receive the healing power of the Holy Spirit right now. Hmm. Somebody just got healed within the neck, and I'm praying for kidneys. Lord, have mercy. That's how good, how good God's grace is. Somebody just got healed right on the left side of the neck and ear. Call this uh, King TV. There'll be more people being healed as I continue to pray. I speak to the, those that have a problem in their gallbladder. You have stones in your bladder. I command these gallbladders to be healed. By the authority of the Holy Spirit, these stones dissolve and melt. Your gallbladder is made strong and whole again. I speak to the prostate organ that it is touched divinely by Christ. And as you touch Jesus and you call on his name, right now his power goes in to those sick areas of your body. I speak to lungs today, emphysema, uh, pneumonia effects of COVID-19, that cancer growth in the left lung. I command that growth to die and leave your body right now. And this infirmity come out. And these lungs receive the healing breath of Jesus. Receive ye the breath of the Holy Spirit. Take deep breaths right now. Do something with your body. Uh, this woman touched Jesus and then confessed it. To move your arm. Somebody got, just got healed. In this area, I just felt that in the right shoulder, shooting pains down your arm, some kind of problem, it could be carpal tunnel or nerve condition, it's healed by the power of God. Lift it up and give God praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sharon, you go, go now, please, and let God give you words of knowledge for the healing of these people. Then Brian, after her. <clears throat> Pastor Kim, as you was talking, uh, the Lord had me start writing some of these problems down. And yes. somebody you're facing gastric reflux and, and it's coming up so bad that it's creating heart pain and um, you're finding it unbearable. And, and 
a word of wisdom that the Lord said to tell you is you got to begin to watch what you're eating. You know, God, God gives us wisdom. Uh, but not only that, the healing power is there, but you can't go back and put the wrong things in. So right now I speak to gastric reflux. I tell it to stop, cease and desist. Arthritis. Somebody right now you're, you're fighting, especially in your hands and you keep grabbing your hands and your mm. knees. When you get up, it's like your knees are so stiff. You, you feel like you're about 20 years older. The healing power of God right there is going into your household. Somebody else memory loss. You, you just, you know, you, you, you think this and then you can't remember. And then you, you're having to write everything down because of memory loss. And the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. I speak to that right now in Jesus name. Somebody is having mental torment, mental mm -hmm. torment. You, you don't know what to do. It, it's heavy on your head, depression, discouragement, somebody, in a, and especially another nation, there's been a witchcraft spirit that has been released on you and sent to you. Uh, I see the breaking of the chicken's neck over you. But right now in Jesus name, we bind that thing up and we tell it to stop, mm. cease and desist. And you are free in whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah, Pastor Kim. Amen. Brian, you want to speak a word before we turn this back to Brother Eric? You're muted Eric, off. Okay. Go ahead, my friend. Okay. Brother guys Eric. Covered, I, don't, I don't have anything at this time. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Go ahead, my dear brother Eric. Amen. Amen. So listen, I want to encourage you right now. I encourage you to check yourself. I encourage you, if you had pain in your shoulder, you couldn't lift your shoulder, start, start moving your shoulder right now. And if you can move your shoulder, the pain's gone. I want you to do me a favor. There's a number at the bottom of your screen right now. Call King Television and tell King Television, I got a miracle a testimony I want to share with you. Now, I encourage you, if you couldn't, if you have problems standing, if you have problems moving your arms or maybe an arthritis, I encourage you to check yourself, start moving your hands, start doing something you couldn't do mm -hmm. before and check. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, you're going to see God has touched you in a powerful way. Now, there's two things I want to consider you here right now. One's called a miracle. And a miracle happens instantaneously. And that's when God gives you a miracle. If you had a tumor that's completely gone, that's a that's a bona fide miracle. I want you to call the number of your screen. There's something called the working of miracles. And all three of us, all four of us on this call have seen that happen where I've literally seen a tumor begin to shrink and perform my very eyes. And I've seen sometimes tumors disappear in three hours after after mm. someone continues to use their faith and crusade. I've seen it sometimes take, take a week. I've seen her. I've seen it take three weeks. But listen, I want to encourage you if God's done something for you and you're seeing the spark, you're seeing the beginning of a miracle, whether it be instantaneous, where instantly you're healed, which I know many of you have been right now, call that number and share that testimony. But there's also something called the working miracle. So I don't want you to be, be disheartened if your miracle, if, if you had maybe a pain level of a nine or 10, maybe the pain levels down to a two or three, and now you can move your knees like you couldn't before. Maybe you couldn't stand. Now you're able to stand. That is a progress of miracles. So listen, don't be discouraged. God is going to complete that work in you. You got to be careful because the devil's going to try to come to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10, John 10, 10. So be careful to guard your faith. Be careful what you put in your ears. Be careful what you say out of your mouth, because mm -hmm. if you felt God touch you, I want to encourage you. It is a working of miracles and just begin to thank the Lord, begin to thank the Holy Spirit, begin to thank Jesus for what he has done for you, because you're going to see a completion. So please, if you got a miracle testimony, there's a, there's a story back in Luke 17 where Jesus himself healed 10 lepers, but only only one of those 10 came back to give God praise. Think about that. One out of 10. These people had incurable diseases. Leprosy at that time, in, in many cases today, is a death sentence. You are going to die. There is nothing the medical profession can do. But Jesus touched them, and 10 of them were healed. But one of them came back to give God praise. Make sure that one right now. Do me a favor. Please call that number on your screen right now mm -hmm. and tell King Television, guess what? I had pain in my back, my shoulders. I had I had the issues. I had I had, I had migraine headaches. I had, I had back trouble. I'm now pain-free. God has touched me. Remind the devil he is defeated. You know when you call mm -hmm. that number, here's yes. what you're doing. You're reminding the devil that he tried to put a sickness on you that Jesus himself just took off of you. So don't delay. <clears throat> the devil will tell you, oh, just call back tomorrow or later on today. You won't do it. The Bible says now faith is. So I want you to act on your faith right now. Act on that miracle you just received. Don't delay. Call that number and tell King TV what God has done for you. There's people, again, standing by 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because we want to know what God has done for you. We want to know your victory. We want to know your breakthrough and your transformation.
situation. So please, please do that if you would. Powerful, powerful message, Pastor Kim. Thank you so much, sir, for, for sharing today. Our second speaker is a powerful woman of God. Get ready, King Television. She is a preaching machine. This is Sharon Motley. She's coming to us all the way from the great state of Florida, the, the city of Sarasota. Her and her husband do amazing things all across America. She travels all over the world. Pastor Sharon, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, please bring forth the message God's given today for King TV. Thank you, Brother Eric, once again. And what a dynamic message by Pastor Kim. And if he won't mind, I'm going to pick that up. Amen. Because that is probably my most favorite story in the whole Bible. I won't preach the whole time on it. But as you were as you were preaching, Pastor Kim, the Lord gave me notes, uh, things to say. And, and I just want to read them because I have to write them down. Uh, but this woman had no name. She was identified by her sickness and disease. And, you know, a friend today, if you're not careful, people in your family will identify you by the very thing you're struggling with. People in your family will try to put a label on you. Oh, that's grandma. You know, she has lupus. Oh, that's Aunt Sally. You know, she has leukemia. And they'll identify you by your troubles. And so this woman was identified. She had no name. She was identified as the woman, the woman with the issue of blood. And then... He said she had no name and she had no money. And guys, the Bible says that she spent all that she had. I don't know about you. Doctors are expensive. I have friends that are doctors, so I'm not anti-doctors, but they can be expensive. And you go to the emergency room and you get five different bills and you can see how easily people can bankrupt just off of something so simple. So she had no name. She had no money. You know, at the, at that point, she may have had a husband. She may have had children, grandchildren, but they couldn't be with her because she was confined to a place of other people with blood issues. So she had no family. You know, I, I think about during COVID that we had people and friends and they were dying alone because the doctors and nurses said nobody can come in the room and the fear of that and just not having family or friends. So here we are, a woman has no name, a woman has no money. And now she has no family because of the disease. And the Bible says she had nothing to her name. She only had one hope. And that was get to the man that she had heard about. And I, I love this part when God said, he said, she touched him, but in reality, he touched her. Amen. She touched him, but in reality, he touched her. And, you know, I love Pastor Kim that, you know, she heard about Jesus. What are you hearing about Jesus? Because if you're somewhere and you're constantly hearing how bad God is, God's going to get you for that. God's going to punish you. You know, God's, God's not a good God. I love, I love it. Years ago, Oral Roberts came on television and his opening statement is, was God was a good God and people persecuted him for such a simple statement that had so much truth. And you know, if you don't have the mentality and knowledge that God is a good God, he loves you. He's not trying to take from you. He's trying to deposit on the inside of you. He's trying to give you his life and that life more abundantly. And if you don't have that revelation, you'll begin to believe that God is out to get you. But when you find out it's the devil, the enemy who comes to kill and steal and destroy, but God has come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. He's not killing you, then healing you or stealing from you and then giving back. That would be schizophrenic. And we do not serve a schizophrenic God. So today, I'm here to tell you that we serve a God of the impossible. What seems impossible with man is possible with God. Now, I think about the story where the four men took his friend on a cot, and they wanted, they wanted to take him to Jesus. And they get to Jesus, and Jesus is bombarded. He's in the house, but there are so many people. You know what? Can I help you today, friend? Maybe you're a pastor. Maybe you're a teacher. If you will preach the word of the Lord, if you will show compassion to people, you'll never lack people. Amen. People will be drawn to you when you show them the goodness of God. Here Jesus is talking about the Father, and his house is packed full. Oh, but I love tenacious friends. I let, you know, that's why it's important who you hang around. That's why it's important who's in your circle because they'll help you believe. They'll help you get on the rooftop. So these friends take this cot with this man. Can you imagine how heavy it was? And somehow they're, they're getting ladders and they're climbing up. Can you imagine the, the layman? We, we can't let him fall off. How are we going to navigate this, God? But they get on the roof. And what do they do? They tear the roof off. They, they were like, money is no problem. Did you know how much money 
would you put on the worth of your healing? How much money would you put on the value of a soul that you don't have enough money, right? I know people who would spend millions of dollars if they could just be better, right? But I, you know what? The key is we have the name of Jesus. The key is we can touch the hem of his garment, Pastor Kim. The key is all we have to do is call on the name of the Lord and we shall be saved. You know what? The Bible says even right now that the miracle signs and wonders will bring the unbeliever to Christ. So maybe you're here right now and you say, uh, I don't know about that. Well, I'm getting ready to pray for a miracle in your life. You're going to see that he's a miracle working God and you're going to give your life to him because that's just how it works. When you see the goodness of God, when you hear the goodness of God, when he, when you know that God is ready to deposit all of heaven on the inside of you and take hell outside of you and throw it as far as the east is from the west. So friend, right now, would you pray this prayer with me right now? It's a simple prayer, but we're going to give our heart to Jesus. Uh, he's, he's your miracle worker. He's the one that answers your questions. I had somebody tell me a few weeks ago, they said, well, I, you know, if you're going to have all these problems, what's the point in serving the Lord? I said, oh, you asked the right person because I'm going to tell you right now. I said, the way you are right now, you have no hope. The way you are right now, you have nobody to go to who understands the way you have it right now is that you are lost and undone and you have no answers to your questions. And I might have some uh, challenges. I might have conflict. Things might happen that I don't like. I said, but the key to this is I have a master that I can run to. The key to this is I have somebody that I can call his name and peace will come in my heart. Amen. I have what you don't have. So yes, we might have the same problems, but you have no answer, but I have the answer. So friends today, we are giving you the answer. We're giving you the solution to your problems. And his name is King Jesus. Hallelujah. So today, would you just put your hand over your heart? And would you just say this prayer to me? Would you say, Father God, today, I accept Jesus into my heart. And I ask him to forgive me of all of my sins and to cleanse me. I believe that he died on a cross and God raised him from the dead. And from this day forth, I shall be saved. Right there, right there when I was praying, somebody's right deaf ear just opened. Your right, your ear, your ear was, that's the sign right there. That's the sign right there. That deaf ear was open in Jesus name. Somebody right now, you're having problems with your teeth infection in your teeth and it, it keeps coming and you get on antibiotics, it goes away and it, it starts coming back. Would you just lay your hand somewhere uh, upper or lower? Would you just lay your hands on your teeth right now? I curse infection right now in the name of Jesus. I tell it to loose you and I tell it to let you go right now in Jesus name, in Jesus mighty name. There's a woman watching me and you're barren and you've been wanting to have children. I'm going to tell you my short story. My husband and I were married four years before we had a child. And then uh, after four years, we decided we wanted another child. And we tried for almost four more years, so eight years. And uh, I don't disclose my private stuff, even with my family. And my mom, though, kept on, when are you going to have another one? When you gonna... And so one day I got so tired of hearing her ask me that. I said, Mom, we've been trying. And she said, you know, conception problems run in our family. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just don't think about things. She started telling me, cousin. One had in, uh, fertility drugs. One has no kids at all. One, and I mean, she just kept on. Um, and I said, you know what? That will not be named among me. Thank you for telling me that. Sometimes information is good. And I said, I curse this at the root. I want to tell you, we took a seed. We got a seed in our hand, a financial seed. And me and my husband sowed a seed. It was all we could come up with. And I said, Lord, I'm sowing this miracle seed for a baby. And that was August of 1998, we sowed a seed. In January of 1999, after eight years of believing God, I'll, I'll come out with a home pregnancy test that said positive. Hallelujah. I had three children after the first one. Finally, I had to say, that's enough, God. I'm done. But I say that to say this. I've had multiple women come up to me that have been infertile. I got one girl right now that I'm thinking about it. And she came to me in a service and they were crying, her and her husband. They said, we've been trying to get pregnant and it's not happening. This is after my miracle. And I said, oh, the anointing's on me to do this. I prayed for her. She now has three children. Amen. I'm telling you, there was a woman in our church. 
She had fibroid tumors. She had scar tissue where they had already removed so many tumors. And the doctor told her, says, you'll never be able to get pregnant. She had one older son. He said, no more. You'll not, never get pregnant. We pray for her. We touch the hem of his garment. We believe. She come back into the church. She said, Apostle Sharon, I'm pregnant. Hallelujah. And the doctors even told her, we don't know how this happened. There is nowhere in your whole uterus system that an egg could be planted, but God knows. That's why I'm talking to you today about the God of the impossible. Whatever your situation is, your husband just left you, your children have gone and they deserted you. Maybe you just lost your job. I don't care what it is. You know, there's no problem you can come up with that God does not have the solution. All we have to do is believe, you know, and, and that part is on our part. God, I believe. Amen. Somebody said, yes, help my unbelief. Get in the word of the Lord. Listening to messages like this. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. That's a repetitive verb. You keep doing it. You keep hearing the word of the Lord. He is a good God. He is your healer. He sent his word and he healed you. Don't forget his benefits who heals all our diseases, who delivers our life from destruction. Come on, somebody. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, we are healed and we are whole. And what do you do? You just keep hearing it and you keep hearing it and you keep hearing it and faith begins to rise on the inside of you. And you know that God is no respecter of persons. What he did for one, he's going to do for you because he loves you in the midst of your, your crazy, in the midst of your mistakes. He still loves you. He still wants you. He still wants to heal you. So today, friend, we're going to pray before I turn it over to Brother Eric. But whatever your prayer request is right now, would you send it to the email that you see on the screen? Send it in. Amen. And if you're watching in America, you can send it to Sharon Motley Ministries at Gmail. I will forward them to King Television. If you don't, if you don't see it right there on the screen now, we want to touch and agree with you. We have we believe in the power of two or more would agree on earth is touching any one thing, it shall be done. Amen. So right now, friend, what is it you need? Come on, get that in your mind. A financial breakthrough. Come on, a marriage breakthrough. A child. Maybe your allergies are going crazy. These last two minutes right here, we're going to touch and pray, and I'm going to release a miracle. I'm going to ask these men of God just to release it with me. Amen. There's no time and distance in the spirit. I don't care if you're watching this three months later. The power of the Lord is present yes to heal the power of the Lord. That's why when they let him down out of that roof and they lowered him to Jesus, the Bible said, and the power of the Lord was present to heal. And it's present even right now. So would you stretch your hands towards your, your phone, your TV, whatever it is. And would you stretch your hands and let's pray. Father, right now in Jesus name, I release miracles. I release signs and wonders right now. I command deaf ears to open. I command blinded eyes to see. I command that person to get up out of the wheelchair right now. Get up. That's right. Push yourself up right now in Jesus' name. Begin. One step. Come on. Take another step. Come on. Do it by faith in Jesus' name. God's doing it. God's working in you right now. Father, I thank you. That barren woman shall have children. Mm. I thank you for it right now. I praise you for it. Uh, Pastor Kim, you got something? I just see Hallelujah. the Holy Spirit coming on and baptizing people actually right now. So in the name of Jesus Christ, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Yes. Be baptized now in the Holy Spirit and release those utterances of tongues and of praise. Just go ahead and begin to praise God. The Lord is releasing a prayer language right now. I see a lady worshiping the Lord. And uh, I, I'm rejoicing with you. God is filling people with the Holy Spirit because why? He's very present to heal, to save, to feel. He's right here with us right now. Hallelujah. So take it right there. Take it right there. Whatever you need. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you need that miracle, just would you just reach out and grab it? Sometimes you just got to reach out and grab it. I take it, Lord. I take it right now in Jesus' yes. mighty name. Friend. Call that number, email us, let us know so we can rejoice with you on the great things that God has done. Thank you, Brother Eric, and I turn it back over to you. 
Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Sharon. Powerful, powerful message. Appreciate you so much. Now, listen, she prayed a prayer early on her message, a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it, it's a simple prayer. You don't have to pray 13 paragraphs. You don't have to wear sackcloth and ashes anymore. When you pray a prayer, and the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, we believe in our heart, we confess from our mouth that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. Guess what? You're born again. You're saved. The Bible says you're now, you're now on your way to heaven. And mm -hmm. what's so great about this is when you get to heaven some day you're going to hear this from god himself well done good and faithful servant enter into your rest that's why we're all we're all working as hard as we can because we want to win as many people to hear that phrase in heaven we're talking millions and millions and i believe you if you prayed that prayer you you're going to hear that same phrase we're on this earth maybe 80 90 100 years somewhere in that general area but guess what eternity is forever and if you prayed that prayer you're going to spend eternity with god himself and i pray many family members many loved ones you know many many many, many co-workers, those kind of things. And guess what? If you have prayed that prayer, here's what God's also done. He's thrown your sins, the Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, which simply means this. When you're a brand new Christian, sometimes that phrase means, what do you mean by that, Brother Eric? I mean this, that God looks at you right now, if you prayed that prayer, as if you've never sinned before. Now, as soon as I make that statement, the devil's going to jump all over that. He's going to say, oh, don't you remember what you did hours ago or days ago, weeks ago, months ago, maybe even years ago? In God's eyes, you might remember, but in God's eyes, he has forgotten it. That's the beauty of what Jesus Christ has done for us on that cross. When he shed his blood, He re, it was for remission of all mankind's sins, of previous as well as past in the future. Mm -hmm. So guess what? My sins were covered. Pastor Kim's, Pastor Sharon's, Dr. Bryant's, and yours were covered. When, when, you, when you prayed that prayer, instantly, mm -hmm. instantly, God took every sin you've committed, whether it be five sins or 50,000, and he threw them into the sea of forgetfulness. And now you are part of the family of God. So welcome to the family of God. And if you prayed that prayer, please call that number at the bottom of your screen right now and tell King TV, I prayed this prayer of salvation with Pastor Sharon. And I'm so I'm so I'm so excited. People talk about it feels like you got a shower in the inside when you pray those prayers. I pray you felt that feeling. If that's the case, please call that number. And then Pastor Sharon and as well as Pastor Kim, uh, we're, we're praying together. And, and, and I know many miracles are being wrought. So I want to encourage you, just like I did with Pastor Kim, please check yourself. Check yourself right now and if you had pain in a certain part of your body and it's gone maybe you had cancer maybe you had cancer in a liver or maybe it, maybe it's a kidney now you can't visibly see the cancer but you know you have because you had pain the doctors kind of explain to you where it's at guess what i encourage you to check yourself right now i believe you're going to find out that pain is gone if that's you now you can't see it Call the number of your screen because I believe it's a tangible miracle that God's giving you. But then I also encourage you, make sure you verify that with your doctors because I believe the doctor is going to verify that guess what? The cancer is gone. Now, listen, if you got that miracle, please, I encourage you, please call that number on your screen and share your testimony with King TV. And again, the Bible says this way in, um, in Matthew 6, 33, we're supposed to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And guess what? Then all of these things are added unto you. And I believe as soon as you pray that prayer for, for to receive Christ as your Savior, I believe healing is yours. The brother Shambach used to say it this way, healing and salvation are the Siamese twins of the gospel, which means when you come to Christ, guess what? You get all the benefits and all the benefits. One of those benefits is healing for your body, but there's also nine gifts of the spirit. And pastor Kim was mentioning that as you've been in, maybe potentially in filled with the Holy spirit. And that's when you begin, the Holy spirit begins to give you an utterance. These are not words that you comprehend, but God himself comprehends these words. So if you begin to get a word or two, sometimes it's a beginning process where a baby first comes to say his, his first or her words, they'll say mama, papa. You might just get a couple words like that. Don't don't be discouraged by that. Begin to say it because as that child gets older, doesn't that child begin to speak a phrase and then a sentence and paragraphs? Then becomes a point in time where you can't, you can't keep the, the child quiet because he's speaking so much. Guess what? That's the kind of thing God will do for you as well. And that's just one of nine gifts. So I encourage you, seek the other eight as well because they're just as easily to obtain as that first one that we just talked about, because guess what? They're gifts. Gifts are free. There's no, there's, there's nothing you have to pay for. God wants to put them in your life. God wants them to be utilized in your life. So please do me a favor. If you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, call that number as well. Tell King Television. Uh, and last but not least, if you prayed the prayer to receive Christ as Savior, please do these three things before I turn over to Dr. Brian. Please find yourself a good full gospel church in the city that you're in. Now, this, this network is going into 182 nations. We're talking hundreds of thousands of cities are being covered. But please find yourself a good full gospel church. Some, some churches have midweek services. 
be in a service potentially tomorrow or on Thursday, but please make sure you're in a church by this coming Sunday. When you get to that church, tell that pastor, I just came to Christ a few days ago watching King Television. Now that pastor is going to give you a lot of special attention. He's going to put you alongside some great men and women of God of faith. They're going to help you to walk with God. The Bible says we're supposed to forsake not the assembly ourselves. That's Hebrews 10, 25. So please be in a church this coming Sunday. And then I want you to get yourself a Bible. Now you may say, Brother Eric, because of inflation, I can't afford Bibles. I have good news for you. You can download Bibles onto a phone, a tablet, or a computer, and it doesn't cost you a penny. Read God's Word every day. Just as you eat food every day, or you prefer you want to eat food every day, listen, read God's Word every day. It will transform your life. And last but not least, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, we can cast our cares upon Him. You know why? He cares for us. He loves us. He's got such great plans and purposes for us. And again, you're not on this earth by accident. You are here for such a time as this, because I believe you not only got saved, of course, to Get yourself on the way to heaven, but I believe God's going to use you to win others for Christ. I believe if you got touched and you're healed, praise God for that, but I believe God's going to use you to touch, lay yeah. hands on the sick, and you're going to see him recover because God's not a respected person. What he does for Pastor Kim, Dr. Brian, Pastor Sharon, he will do for you as well. So do those three things and watch how God will transform your life. Thanks again, Pastor Sharon. Appreciate you. Our third and final speaker right now is Dr. Brian Adams. He's coming to us all the way from Jackson, Ohio. Dr. Brian, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, sir, please bring forth the message God's given you today for King TV. Well, I believe that I could just sit here and say amen to these other two powerful ministers. I'm enjoying this. You know, sometimes it's good for us ministers to just hear some good preaching because we're always studying preaching. But I, I just feel I want to encourage people. You know, there's physical problems and uh, the people have been speaking about words of knowledge and healing. But I want to encourage you today about your mental stability. You know, the Bible says in the end times, many people's hearts would fail them because of fear. Now, fear is not going to start in this heart. Fear is going to start right here. But one thing I found out as I read his word, it says, my God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Now, if I if he's giving me a sound mind, I'm gonna locate that thing and I'm gonna take a hold of it. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna allow myself to be crazy anymore. I'm gonna have that sound mind. You know, the Bible says we have the same mind that was in Christ. A lot of people try to act like they have the physical brain. No, that's not what it means. It means the same mentality. He didn't have a problem with saying, I'm a son, God's my father. Get rid of that orphan spirit, receive that spirit of adoption come into the family. Now pay attention to what I'm about to say, because I really feel that it's important. See, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven doesn't come with observation. It's not meat nor drink. You can't say there it is or here it is. But the kingdom of heaven is peace, righteousness, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So inside you, he said the kingdom is within you. So I want to encourage you that no matter what's happening outside, now Jesus said there's nothing you can do, but trouble is going to come. If you live righteous, you're going to be persecuted. There's going to be people talking about you. There's going to be wars and rumors of war. But we've got a guard allowing that to come into our heart. we got to keep the peace inside and the storm outside. You know, I love what the children of Israel said when they were getting ready to throw him in the fiery furnace. They said, our God's able, but even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow down to your God. I want to encourage you, don't bow down to the fear. Don't bow down to the poverty. You know, Jesus said, they didn't enter into my rest because of their unbelief. And when I did a study on rest, it simply means to cease or to stop striving for provision. That striving is worry. It's it's. It's proof of unbelief. Just relax. Do what God gives to you, job opportunities, overtime, relatives, but don't panic about it. See, we've got to begin, and I love the, as I watch the devil try to come against what really is good for us. They'll say, oh, name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. And, and, and so many people who have no idea what they're talking about, they're hearsay proclaimers. They've heard someone else say it, thinks it sounds good. But you've got to become a person that knows how to talk. Faith has a language and a vocabulary, and that vocabulary is the Word of God. Now, the Bible says Jesus is the chief high priest of our confession. Well, if he's going to be the apostle of our confession, we got to give him something to talk, to do with. we got to give him some positive word. I found out in my 40 years of being born again is you'll never rise above your confession. 
If you're like, I feel sick, you're going to be sick. Man, I'm too poor and got nothing. That's how you're going to be. But I found out that like God, I'm going to begin to call things that be not and though as though they are. Now, I'm not talking about claiming uh, a Maserati car when I can't afford the insurance on a beat down, broken Volkswagen. I'm talking about using wisdom, finding out from God what is his will, then I begin to proclaim it. You know, it's not because the pain's gone or the pain's there that you're healed or not healed. It's because the word of God says so. So from the inside, that peace, that righteousness and joy, I've got to create an environment around me that's conducive for miracles. The devil will call you just like, oh, man, I almost have to shut my phone off. I get so many spam callers, and, you know. And so that's like you need to do the same thing. Treat the devil like a telemarketer. When he calls up with symptoms of sickness, you say, no, you got the wrong number. This is the healed of the Lord. No, I'm not broke, busted, disgusted, and can't be trusted. I'm the blessed. I'm the prosperous of the Lord. I finally made a decision after all these years. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but let me share something else with you. I'm not ashamed of the prosperity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I've tried uh, the, 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 uh, the, the message of uh, poverty, and I couldn't get anywhere, couldn't feed myself, couldn't take care of my family. So I'm going to begin to speak and see what I find in the Word. It becomes revelation to me. I'm going to speak it around me. Lord, I thank you that no matter where I go, people are going to get saved, people are going to get healed. That's the mentality. That's my mindset. That's the atmosphere that's around me. Man, one day I was walking down the, uh, driving down the road, and I walked into a gas station. Never been there. It was a city I was driving through, and all of a sudden there was a person, third person in line. Everybody else kind of got out of focus. It was almost like a television camera, and the guy stood out of the crowd. I didn't know him from Adam and Eve. I didn't pay attention to the cash register person, the other two people in the line. I walked up and said, "Sir, it's time for you to give your heart to Jesus." Didn't know him, no previous conversation. He began to weep and cry. I led him to the Lord. Turned on, walked out, didn't even get what I was going. I was going in to get a, a Mountain Dew or something. Didn't even get it. It was, I call that the anointing of increase. Some sow, some water, but God gives increase. So, because see, that atmosphere is around me when I started saying, I, I'm not in this to get make friends and, and to be popular. I'm not worried about the woke culture canceling me because I'd have to be subscribed to you in order for you to cancel me. So if I don't subscribe to you, I don't got to worry about it. But friends don't let friends go to hell. We've got to begin to become the visible image of the invisible God. Yes. We've got to be some of the only pages of the Bible people will ever, ever, ever use. You know, some, uh, I was talking to a lady one time. She said, man, I go to church, but there's only hypocrites here. I thought, you know, I've heard that a lot. The other day I saw something on Facebook was amazing. A guy goes, you know, people complain about hypocrites being in church. He said, let me tell you something. I walked in the gym the other day and there was fluffy fat people in that gym, and, and the gym's supposed to represent fitness in the house. Could you imagine that there was overweight, out-of-shape people in the gym? He goes, oh, wow, it's kind of like the church. There's some people in there that's really holy, really in shape, really welcome, but there's a lot of people that's not. He goes, well, maybe the gym is for those out-of-shape people, too. Ooh, I, I said, that's a good way to explain it. Maybe the church is for a few hypocrites, not for them to stay that way, but for them to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Quit making excuses. Do not forsake the assembling of yourself together. Put on the forearmor of God. Get happy. Get healthy. Get whole in the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, one day, uh, years ago, I was I was playing law enforcement. Uh, my testimony part of it, I was, I was a deputy sheriff. Undercover narcotics on a SWAT team. I had my SWAT gear on. I came on one day, was getting ready. I knew we had a, a drug bust that night. And I was getting stuff ready, had my guns on. My wife is crying. She's always telling me, you're not called to be a cop. You're called to be a preacher. Stop this foolishness. I said, woman, be quiet. Here's some money. Go shopping. Leave me alone. I'm going to church. I'm doing good stuff. And she'd say, you're not called to do good stuff. You're called to do God stuff. I'm like, I'll be quiet. Be quiet. And I came in one day, and she's crying like I've never seen her cry in, in my life. Similar to sometimes when she was interceding and praying, but this was on the couch 
and she was losing. I'm looking around to see if the kids are hurt. I'm like, no, if they're at the hospital, she'd be with them. What's the matter? Finally, I grab her and shake her and say, stop it. Tell me why you're crying so I can fix what the problem is. And she looked at me and said, don't you care about the hundreds of thousands of souls attached to your call? Man, it's like somebody punched me right in the nose. I took off out in the garage, got my truck, and took off because God had used her to bring me to a point where I've said, it's not about me. It can't be just about me when I like. I think there's some people listening today. You know the call of God's on you. You know God's uh, giving you a time to, to do stuff, to get into the ministry. But you're doing something else. You're out on there. I'm calling you right now on the carpet, as they say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Answer that call of God. My good, good friend, I'm telling you, until you get in your place, you'll never find your grace. And without the grace, it'll wear you out. It'll beat you down. It'll be a terrible, terrible life. But now there's nothing greater than walking down the road going, I smell a sinner. And I start preaching and sharing. I was in a grocery store the other day. No customers came in for an hour. I knew it was a setup. And I stood there and preached to the two girls behind the counter. One had a growth and gallstones. And she got healed and the growth disappeared. They both gave their heart to the Lord. And I'm like, my job here is done. Now it's time for me to go on. Now, I wasn't supernaturally translated. But I walked out and sat in my car, I called my wife. I said, hey, some of them, hundreds of thousands that's assigned to my call, just got in the boat. God's called you. But the devil's whispered in here and told you you're not good enough. The, the least likely you are to be qualified is the more qualified you are to be forgiven and to be filled with the Holy Spirit and then to begin to walk in holiness. It's impossible without him. But with him, all things are possible. I want to invite you right now. You've been in rebellion, just like I was in rebellion, doing my thing. Pray this prayer. If you have never accepted Christ, you can be born again. If you're backslidden and walked away, you can recommit. Just pray this prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you. I forgive everybody that's ever hurt me. I forgive everyone that's ever hurt me. I forgive myself. I release the past and I let it go. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. I believe he died for my sins. And I believe he was raised from the dead. I believe Jesus is the only way of salvation. Lord, come into my heart. I give you my life. I'm going to quit running right now. I bow at your altar. Use me. Transform me to your image. I hear that song in my head. I surrender all. That's what God wants you to do right now. Surrender all. You're not going to understand him, so quit trying. His ways are so far above your ways and my ways. And, and the Bible says the natural mind of man can't understand the things of God. You know, if you prayed that prayer, I believe you just became born again. Now, I want to encourage you to get in a Bible-believing church. Get a hold of you a Bible from the church or download it on your smartphone, your, your iPad or whatever. And tell the preacher, I got to get baptized now. The preacher told me, once I get my heart to the Lord, I need to be water baptized. First step of obedience after confession. Get in that church and say, I got to be discipled. Learn to live in the kingdom with success. That's what I want to encourage you to do. It is 2.58. I got two minutes, and, and I want you to call that number on the screen, and I give it back to Eric. Eric, catch it. Here it comes. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Brian. Now, listen, I want to encourage you right now. Again, if you prayed a prayer, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Again, it's the greatest prayer you can ever pray. Romans 10, 13 says it this way, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, whosoever is everybody. Does not make a difference if you're male or female? Does it make a difference if you're in a different country? If you're in America, if you're in Zimbabwe, if you're in Kenya, if you're in Pakistan, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So guess what? 
I want you to rejoice by that, by calling that number on your screen right now. And I've been getting messages from King Television several times throughout this broadcast. The lines have been busy when people are calling because so many people are calling in from all over the world. Thousands are coming to Christ today through these messages and multiple thousands of miracles are being shared and, and, and praise reports are taking place. So we give God praise for what he's doing because the Bible says this way, when we lift Jesus up, he draws all men and women unto him. So today has been a great day of salvation, and people are still trying to call and share their testimonies, share their salvation experiences. So listen, if the line's busy, don't be discouraged by that. Call back three, four, five, six minutes later because there's people sending by because we want to hear from you. We want to know what God's doing with you, and we want to know what God's doing through you. You know, I always encourage you to listen to Please use your faith, use your words in your mouth to share what God has done for you. You know, it's it's well, there's life and death in the power of our tongue. That's that's Proverbs 18, 21. Use the power of your tongue today to give God praise for saving your soul. And I believe many were also touched as Dr. Brian were being was, was ministering. I believe many people were being healed in their bodies. I believe many people were being set free and delivered from different things as well. And if that was you, please call that number on your screen. You know, the, the, the Bible talks about many examples back in the Old Testament where the children of Israel would see breakthroughs. They would see they would see blessings. They would see God stepping in and do a miracle for them. And many times what they would do, they would pile stones on a spot, many times across the river, for example. And when children or, or people passed by 8, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years ago or, or later, or even generations after that, they would ask questions. They would say, Mom, Dad, what, why are those stones over there? And they would say, guess what? I'm glad you asked that question. You know what happened? Many years ago, here's what the Lord did for us when we crossed when we crossed over from the Jordan. Or, or here's what God did for us here. Guess what? I encourage you, if you prayed that prayer of faith today and you received Jesus Christ, your Savior, I hope you have a Bible. If you don't, put Put on today, mark today's date down, and the day in which you receive Christ your Savior. And I encourage you, use today as your spiritual birthday. Now, we celebrate our natural birthdays, don't we? Uh, with cake and candles and with ice cream, balloons, sometimes the presents. I encourage you, if you prayed that prayer, celebrate your spiritual birth today and celebrate it every year. Remember what the goodness of God has done. Just like those children of Israel put stones there to remind them what God has done for them. I hope and pray you write something down that remembers this day, because today is an important day for you if you prayed that prayer to receive Christ. And guess what? Maybe you prayed that prayer for a second, a third time, maybe a fourth or fifth time. Maybe when you're, you've been away from God, maybe maybe you fell away for, for a season. But when you heard these messages, you prayed that prayer with a sincere heart again. Guess what? God's waiting for you with arms wide open because that's who he is. He loves us. He's got so many great things in store. So please call that number, share your miracle testimony, share your salvation experience. Team, I'll okay. say thank you as always for your time today. One thing we never get back is time and you just miss the gospel into 182 nations of the world. The phone lines are completely full right now as people are sharing miracle testimonies and salvation experiences. And I want to remind you that Watch King Television, I ask you always to pray for Pastors John and Rachel. They're doing all they can to win souls literally all over the world. And for those that watch this network on a regular basis, I always like to exhort you and say, listen, put your hope, your trust, your faith in God. You know why? Because he cares for you. And until next time, this is Eric Smith saying we love you. We're praying for you. Bye-bye for now. Okay, Sharon.